Crypto.com have their own very detailed analysis of the number of active wallets. They've got 516 million. Kind of adds up if you look at Coinbase users, there's 110 million Coinbase accounts. Not all of them are active, obviously. Right now, there's about 10 million active. Binance at about 150 million. You know, then there's a whole bunch in India. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So it's about 500 million people, wallets, however we want to look at it, right? So that's a reasonable amount. And it's been growing at 100% a year. Even in 2022, which was a bear market, the number of active wallets grew 42%. So it's growing incredibly fast. I've said for a long time, it was the fastest adoption of any technology the world's ever seen. Faster than the internet, faster than the mobile phone, faster than the television. But obviously AI just overtook that. It got zero to 100 million in five weeks. But still, the pace of adoption is, is ridiculously big. So even if we extrapolate out the trend, in a year's time, we're at a billion. Maybe it's maybe the trend slows. Maybe it's 750 million by the end of 2024. Right. And then, you know, you very soon get to very large numbers, two, three, four billion people, which is kind of when you get a more saturated market. So we are still early, but we're not super early. You know, and I, I would suggest that the cycle that lies ahead that we've started is probably the cycle I refer to as the everything, everywhere, all at once cycle, where we do see adoption from every angle. In our recent discussion with Raoul Powell, we focused on the growth of active crypto wallets even amidst the bear market. The latest data from 2024 reveals a continuing trend in the global crypto wallet market, with an estimated value significantly higher than in previous years. The market is experiencing robust growth, driven by the increasing adoption of digital currencies, the rise of hot wallets for their user friendliness, and the growing interest in cold wallets for enhanced security, especially among institutional and high net worth investors, are notable trends. This growth is not just limited to wallet numbers. We're also observing a diversification in the types of wallets being used. Android continues to dominate the market, but iOS is gaining ground due to its perceived security advantages. This indicates a maturing market that caters to different user preferences and needs. With this expanded insight into the crypto wallet market, let's delve deeper into how global economic cycles impact the crypto world. If you're eager to understand the future of finance, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. The Bitcoin cycle is the macro cycle. Don't forget, all assets are going up and down in this four-year cycle, as is the economy, as are interest rates. It's all due to 2008 and resetting interest rates back to zero, all the government, major governments around the world. They then issued their debt in this three to five-year sector. So let's call it four years on average. And this debt refinancing cycle is the cycle that drives Bitcoin, all crypto, all assets. It's also the presidential cycle. They're all the same thing right now. Right, this is this super correlated world. So within it, the first part, what I call macro spring, which is what we've been in, the early part of a bull market, when inflation is starting to fall, growth is still falling, but starting to try and stabilize somewhere. Normally, that's when Bitcoin outperforms. It's like in the beginning of a bond market rally, it's treasuries that outperform. Then as people get confidence and more liquidity comes in the system, they start taking more risk and it goes further out the risk curve. And that's when the alts start performing. So we're transitioning currently from macro crypto spring to macro crypto summer. So that's what's known as alt season. It starts with the higher quality tokens first, and then at the end of it, in 2025, it's kind of everything goes up ridiculously. We're going into election year. You brought up the, the presidential election. I believe, and I want to know what your thoughts are, I believe that an administration that's the incumbent administration where we've witnessed interest rates, you know, be increased in, in a very, you know, some people's opinion, violent manner upward, that we're going to see lower rates, especially before the summer, before the election in an election year. And when you, and, and more liquidity coming into the market, and when you add all those things up, you get your 60%. Is that is that where you were headed or am I misstating it? Yeah. So the regular macro cycle is exactly as you're saying. Governments want to bribe voters. So they give out as many candies as possible. And that's stimulus. 
The central bank is involved in this because it has to help refinance the government finance debt. So they do want to get interest rates lower. They're talking a harder game now. I think they want inflation to undershoot because then that gives them the cover to use the balance sheet, to print money, do all of the things that they do. And that's fine. And that would be a normal crypto cycle. We've seen that pretty much every time we get into the halving year. But we are seeing some bigger dynamics here, which is we could see a huge amount of capital coming in because of the ETF. And because of a lot of people are building on real world assets, you know, we're seeing money transmission mechanism stuff being done. We're seeing, you know, new use cases of NFTs. They were they were new for the last cycle. You know, what are we going to use them for when Solana can can mint a million NFTs for a hundred bucks? Well, you can use it for ticketing. You can do all sorts of things we can't yet imagine. And we've got the CBDCs are going to be rolled out in some places within this cycle, which is, again, using the underlying chain and the ongoing growth of stable coins. And we're seeing brands come into the space to use kind of Web3 as a way forward for new business models, which is why I call it the everything everywhere all at once, which may, means that we could have collective madness where kind of more like the 2017 cycle, right. it just goes crazy. Now, either I expected the same kind of finish of the 2021 cycle. I got that spectacularly wrong, but maybe we get it this time around. It's bear market was the same as all the other bear markets. So even though we went through this extraordinary macro situation with this ridiculous inflation and huge, as you said, violent rate rises, Bitcoin went down 76%. It's kind of, yeah, kind of does that every time, you know? And so I think just what happens is as liquidity comes out of the system, liquidity comes out of cryptocurrencies as it does out of emerging markets, as it does out of commodities, as it does out of all of these things. When liquidity comes back, it comes back. But each drawdown from every bear market in Bitcoin is less than the last. It's like ETH last time around was, first time around was 97.5% down. Wow. Second time, 80%. Third time, probably 70%. You know, Solana, first cycle down 98.5%. <laughs> Next cycle, if it you know if it does well and thrives, right. it will be eighty percent, right? And Bitcoin will be less the next time around. Building on our discussion with Raoul Powell, we dive into how the Bitcoin cycle correlates with broader economic patterns. Let's also consider the key trends shaping the crypto landscape in twenty twenty four. A positive shift is expected, with increased institutional demand and growing Bitcoin adoption set to drive innovation. Key trends include corporate involvement, Bitcoin centric developments and scalability solutions such as rollups, offering cost-effective and faster transactions on blockchain networks. The global economic landscape, including shifts in interest rates and government policies, is directly impacting the crypto market. For instance, the anticipated approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs is expected to be a major business driver in 2024, offering diverse investment opportunities and further integrating Bitcoin into the mainstream financial system. For crypto investors, this represents a period of exciting opportunities. The integration of blockchain across industries, the growth of decentralized infrastructure, and the increasing role of institutional investors are creating new avenues for innovation. You know, um, Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, uh, famously said about two, three years ago uh, that 99% of the tokens out there were going to zero. You know, I think there was 20,000. And if that's true, that would leave a couple hundred if, if you go with the 1% of 20,000. Let me ask you, do you do you agree with that sentiment that 99% out there are? To, yeah, how, how to think about this is for eternity, retail investors have been shut out of venture capital, which has generated huge returns. This is basically tokenized venture capital. And so the VC game is about 80% of everything goes to zero. 18% right. um, does okay. And 1% knocks it out of the park. It's exactly the same. New businesses die when they don't get traction. And that's okay. It's, you know, it's this perfect, pure capitalist cycle that goes on in crypto. Yeah, there's a bunch of scams and there's a bunch of bad behavior, but there is in all businesses. And it's not just in crypto. Do you think, since we're going to talk about the United States, that the incumbents have seen you can't kill it, so let's crush it. So maybe, you know, the the... Uh, Larry Finks and the Black Rocks, and they come in and they get a bigger piece? Or do you think I'm just got the tinfoil hat on there? I think there's multiple attack vectors going on here. One is government 
because government has a monopoly on money and violence. And, you know, when, when you are the world's reserve currency, you're very nervous of making a wrong move. Right. We've seen this repeated. I've written about this on Twitter. After the US left the gold standard, they tried to stop capital flight, had capital controls. So the UK started the FX market, which is the largest market the world has ever seen. Because, you know, South Africa wants to trade with the UK and dollars come in the middle. And we're like, well, we need we need an FX market to trade because we're not using gold anymore. Then it happened with the euro dollar market because the US banks were not allowed to lend internationally. So the UK started the euro dollar market, became the largest market the world has ever seen. Happened again with derivatives. They wanted to protect the CME and the CBOT. So they're like, we're not going to let the banks have regulatory cap um, availability for OTC derivatives. So London started the OTC derivative market. The swap market was first, became a $1.4 quadrillion market. So we've got a history of the United States being cautious around these things and eventually catching up. So that's what I think. Liz Warren is, there's some nervousness around that. There then is just votes, right? The world is pretty polarized right now. And one of the ways this polarizes people is young people vote for crypto. So they're much higher, you know, 30% of millennials will own crypto. Of the baby boomers, much less. Liz Warren is a poster child for the baby boomers. Right. So she's trying to get votes, which is the we fear change crowd, which is the older people who like, I'm, I know what I know and I like what I like. So I think it's, it's political and it's also out of fear over control, control over money. And the US has control over money and it, and it can sense that something's changing, even though stable coins have actually made it more dollarized. Right. The banks, from as far as I'm aware, forget what Jamie Dimon says, because he's got a monopoly basically of banking, but all of the banks know that blockchain technology is the solution, every one of them, and they're all working on it. So they're not really fighting us at all. They're just shit scared of Liz Warren and Gensler. Right, that's the real problem here is they can't move forwards. You know, do you think Goldman wants an OTC trading desk for crypto? Of course it does, but it's still worried. Still worried about what it can do. The asset management firms haven't been able to create products because they don't know who's going to get sued. And so that's the issue here is for some reason Liz Warren has been given control over the financial system by Biden and Gensler is her puppet. Each bear market in Bitcoin's history has been less severe than the last, signaling the growing maturity of the crypto market. The recent bear market demonstrated resilience in specific cryptocurrencies with less severe downturns than previous cycles. This suggests a growing maturity and stability in the crypto ecosystem, supported by the increasing use of cryptocurrencies as a long-term store of value. Looking towards the future, it's clear that the crypto world is more than just currencies. It's a technological revolution reshaping our digital landscape. From finance to art, blockchain is paving the way for innovative solutions. If you found this analysis helpful, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.